Okay, so, um, people have been asking for this for a while, actually. Um, uh, there were actually two people in particular here recently who've been asking for it. Starkill 8 is the most recent one that I could find. Uh, And then, uh, on the past couple videos. And then before that, uh, Jay Andrews, uh... And we figured since I feel like were... I've seen other people ask for it as well. Like people like comment on their comments and are like, "Yes." And so and then uh, it's been more than a couple people that have asked for this. Yes, technically. So I'm I'm going to uh, we're going to start watching this. This is Freeman's Mind. We're going to do the first two episodes just to uh, you know just to get things going, and uh, we're going to see what we think. So. Anyway, let's get the uh, video. Don't really know anything about it, what it's going to be. But Me neither. We'll find that out. We're going in blind. Let's see what happens. Here we go. I'm assuming it's Half-Life related somehow. Uh, of course. Geez, I'm running late. Good morning. Who and said that? To the Black Mesa Transit System. Oh, see her. This automated train is provided for the security and Ah, uh, I'm not the, the only one who's late. Facility Sucker! <laughs> <laughs> the time is 8.40. So it's basically Shit. just going to be giving Freeman a voice. I didn't know it was that late. <laughs> Seems oh, like. Oh, man. 8.47. I am so dead. The Black Mesa compound is maintained Shit. at a pleasant 68 degrees at all times. I need to buy a watch. I'm already on probation with the company. They could fire me. This train is inbound. Oh, well. Level 3 dormitories. What can you do? Sector C <laughs> test labs and control facilities. I really want to download Black Mesa because Black Mesa is pretty much a full rebuild of, of uh, Half-Life 1. Yeah. Played back through Half Life One like two years ago or so. Forgot how fucking hard that game is. That's why we leave armed missiles lying around for everyone to check out. It's part of the tour. Due to the high toxicity of material routinely handled in the Black Mesa compound. No smoking, eating, or drinking are permitted Fascist. in the Black Mesa Transit. <laughs> 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 up here if I feel like Please keep your limbs inside the train at all times. Yeah, well, I'll stick my arms out the window if I... Okay, maybe not. Until the train has come to a complete halt at the station platform. In the event of an emergency, passengers are to remain seated and await further instruction. Hey, what's going on there? I should have been a pilot. <laughs> I've been there. Wow. Man, how dumb would you have to be? I mean, they're not going to say something like that unless somebody's already tried to do it, right? I guess if I was drunk enough, I might climb out the window here and pull some hang time on the electrified tram rail. That kind of reminds me of that squirrel that got caught between the power lines one day back at MIT. The thing <laughs> caught on fire and got fused to the wires, which caused a transformer to blow up and knock out the power to all of campus. That squirrel must have cost the university at least $10,000. That was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Melted squirrel. Oh, man. this evening at 1900 hours. I forgot about that. Three facility. The semi-finals for high security personnel will be announced in a separate secure access transmission. I need to practice. Remember, more lives than your own may depend on your fitness. What? We're physicists. Do you have a friend or relative who would make a valuable addition to the Black Mesa team? I don't believe in friends. Immediate openings <laughs> are available in the areas of materials handling and... Oh, cool! Robot! Security. Robots are the only friends I need. For further information. Man. Look at that thing. I don't remember ever seeing that robot again after this scene. No, I don't either. <coughs> That's awesome. The Black Mesa Research Facility is an equal opportunity employer. Man, they're still talking about hiring? I guess my cousin Jesse needs a job. 
Bullying wasn't a sex offender. It'd be so much easier to find something for him. A reminder to all Black Mesa personnel. Regular radiation and biohazard screenings are a requirement of continued employment uh, in the Black Mesa Research Facility. Don't remind me. Missing a scheduled urinalysis or radiation Whoa. We're gonna crash! Immediate termination. Oh, good. If Stop. You, know you have been exposed to radioactive <laughs> or other hazardous material. Oh, hey, look who it is. Course of your duties. It's the G-Man. Hey, what's that green crap? The G-Man. What is this? Rise and Jesus shine, Christ, look at Mr. This Freeman. This is a Rise disaster. And shine. That's gotta be toxic. Yeah, that shit doesn't look so. God, the EPA is going to tear us apart if they find out about that. Well, I'm not saying anything. I don't want to get called in the court as a witness on this once the cat gets out of the bag. Please stand back from the automated door and wait for the security officer to verify your identity. Locked. Before exiting the train, be sure to check your area for personal belongings. Hmm. Thank you, and have a very safe and productive day. Morning, Mr. Freeman. Looks like you're running late. Yeah, you know what? I don't even care anymore. By the time I get suited up, I'm gonna be over an hour late. I figure I'm either fired or I'm not. Is someone following me? Okay, good. Yeah, I'm just gonna stroll in there like I own the damn place. Yeah. Time, maybe get some donuts. <laughs> if I'm fired, I could probably jack some office supplies or computer equipment or something on the way out. I could just stuff things in a big duffel bag. Nobody's gonna notice. Hmm. You know, Steve's never in his cubicle. I could just walk right up and take his laptop. Hell, I could grab that color laser printer from the county. That thing's nice. That's gotta be worth a couple grand right there. Huh. I wonder if it can print money. Okay. Okay. So that's Freeman's Mind Part 1. Now we go into Freeman's Mind Episode 2. Okay, act calm, act calm. If I don't act calm, look, I know something's up when I walk in there. Okay, easy. Control your breathing. Breathe normal. Breathe normal. Breathe normal. <laughs> That'll make you calm. Oh god, they can see you now. Okay, keep against the wall and try and walk straight past the front desk. Don't make eye contact, just walk. Walk! Hey, Mr. Freeman. Damn it! I had a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my file. That's so close! They were having some problems down in the test chamber, too, but I think that's all straightened out. They told me to make sure you headed down there as soon as you got into your hazard suit. Really? Maybe I'm not fired. In that case, let me show you what a genius I am and look at your computer. Getting my glasses again. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Wait a minute. This is a Windows blue screen. And you're typing on it like you know what you're doing. You're not doing anything. <laughs> Shut up. You're just looking busy. That's your whole job, isn't it? Looking busy. Look, you have to reboot it. Where's the reset button? Is this it? My God, what are you doing? Well, that's not it. Come on, Gordon. You trying to get me into trouble? Okay, you can all go to hell if you're going to act like that. See, I don't think I ever realized you could do that. Because I won't. Yeah, it, the little intricacies that? that you... You trying to say something about me? Man, I'll kill you. <laughs> so let me get a crowbar. I'll say that much. Makes me wonder what else they're saying behind my back. Well, it doesn't matter. I could take on any of them. What's up, fool? Man, someday I'm going to own this place. Oh, there's management. Let me guess what they're talking about. You, sir, are mad! Dinosaurs are reptiles! They must be cold-blooded! Now you listen, and you listen good. Birds are one of the closest living relatives to dinosaurs we have. And I don't need to tell you that they're all warm-blooded. Do you know how difficult it is to maintain thermostasis for an animal so long? They're cold-blooded, I tell you. Let me tell you something. There's evidence to suggest that Velociraptors had feathers. Feathers. Now what does that tell you? All right, this is stupid. I may as well go to work. I'm glad I'm not fired. That means I don't have to loot the place. <laughs> stealing from work is so much more stressful than not stealing from work. There's just no comparison. Move it, blue stuff. You got the wrong airlock, Mr. Freeman. You know I can't let you through here. Uh, I knew that. <laughs> This is kind of awkward. Did I really go the wrong way? 
Yep, there it is, Sector B. And I am tripping this morning. <laughs> Wait a second. Did I see what I think I did? Yep, I sure did. Newton's formula for gravitational force. Having trouble remembering that one, guys? What is this? Are we back in high school now? My department's working on quantum displacement. Just what the hell are you guys doing? Jerking around in lab coats from the looks of things. I just can't believe it. Those monkeys in there are having trouble learning about gravity. Whereas I can say that I'm a dynamic gauge invariant Lagrangian in my sleep. There is no justice. Am I hearing things? Turn down the music, you friggin' face head! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that one. <laughs> it does kind of look like there's little fucking like audio things going in that room. Yeah, it does. It looks like those uh, sequencers. <laughs> All those sequen, you know, the sequencer modules in one. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to play on one of those and see what kind of sounds I could come up with. What? Is he talking to me? He's not even looking this way. I could have sworn I heard something. Oh, I'm losing my mind. Well, at least it sounded friendly, unlike that prick back at the lobby. This place is dead. Oh, I see a bowl of noodles with my name on it. Okay, I can do this. The guy on the left isn't looking, but the guy on the right is a rogue element. Uh, uh-oh, he's walking towards me. Stay cool, stay cool. Oh, man, this guy's a pro. I can't compete with this. Damn it. I shouldn't have hesitated. I had it. Oh well. Guess I'll have to grab some. That would have been a dick breaks. move. That would have. <laughs> you wink. <laughs> and then all of a sudden that guy's just like, oh, those are my. Hey, get back. Oh, okay. Damn it. make the politics here just float away. Why do we all have to wear these ridiculous ties? Oh, you want to know why? I'll tell you why. It's symbolic. The manager wants you to know that you're their dog, so you're wearing their leech. You don't see me wearing a tie, do you? You know why? Because I'm a rebel. The day they tried to enforce the dress code on me, I let them know there could be an accident around here if that happened. And by accident, I mean bomb the place. Hey, are you even listening? Forget you. My voice falls on deaf ears. I don't know why I even waste my time on you, sheep. I wonder if Feynman felt the same way. What the hell? Whose stuff is this? There's my name, but... But here's a bowling certificate? Baby pictures? Blue poncho? Where's all my stuff? Where's my stash? This is freaking me out. It's like everything's backwards. And I'm not even left-handed. Okay, I'm just gonna go to work and hope all these problems go away. Yeah. Oh, come on. Now somebody's taking my helmet. Ah, eh, screw it. I probably won't need it anyway. Oh no, there's that voice. Quiet. Wow, this suit does not shut up. Okay, this thing's ridiculous. Where's the off button? There we go. Oh, did it say munitions level monitoring? What does that mean? Does the left hand turn into a chain gun? I wish. Well, right on, mm. sir. Looks like you're in the barrel today. Oh, did he just say I'm in the barrel today? Oh, shit. Looks like I'm not the only person here who knows some dirty jokes. You're in the barrel. I can't believe he said that. I bet he says that to the other scientists and it goes right over their heads. He probably thinks I don't know what it means either, but I do. <laughs> Fair enough. So yeah, that's uh, Freeman's Mind, episodes one and two. <coughs> yeah, I don't want to play Half-Life again. I, I want to I, I play, actually, I want to play Black Mesa. 
I'd like to play that. See what it's all about. I'd like to try it. See uh, if it's any more fair, I guess. It, I don't know if you remember how Half Life One goes, but like even on like lower difficulties, it's like, pretty bullshit. You, yeah, you kind of have to like crouch and shoot stuff in the toe from like around certain like little blind spots and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, because like if you walk out, you just get insta killed in certain spots. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember that big time. I'm Half-Life glad they 2 rebalanced was, uh, it at least by the time they got to Half Life Two. Yeah, Half Life Two was a lot more fair. It was a lot more fun, in my opinion. Yeah, that too. But um, it was still a really good game back in the day. But oh yeah, it was hard as balls. <laughs> balls, balls, balls. But yeah, I also never played episode children. one and two, so I would like to play those eventually as well. Oh, God. I have them on Steam, but I never did. The play ending them. of two. Leave it to the ending of two to just don't rip, spoil it. <laughs> yeah, just rip your freaking heart out. Yeah. But, um, okay, when uh, the offer comes at the end of uh, of the first Half-Life, did you take it or did you deny it? Uh, I'm pretty sure I took it. Well, I, uh, okay, I'll be honest, I denied it my first, like, my first time through, and immediately you're thrown into a room with, like, like, hundreds of, like, very, very, very difficult enemies to beat and with very little to no weapons. Yeah. So you're pretty much screwed. And there's no way to beat it. It's literally an impossible task. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I took the offer the second time and I'm like, okay, I am now officially your, uh, your, uh, your bitch, G-Man. And the G-Man... The G-Man's a lot like the smoking man, uh, the the smoking man from uh, uh, from X Files. He's yeah. he's sort of that uh, unknown entity, like that all knowing character. Uh, also, like the elusive man from Mass Effect. I don't know if you ever played that. Uh, I didn't ever play very far into Mass Effect, but I've heard of the elusive man. Yeah, he's a he becomes a very prominent character in the second one, and uh, he's. I love his character. I love his character a lot. It's just, damn, uh, the the fact that everything you go through in that in that uh, the second game and the third game, and how things play out in the third game is just like, ugh. If only you know. If only we'd have got something different. But that's me bitching about another franchise altogether. You know, Half Life's like if only we could get another one. <laughs> half, yeah, for Half Life, it's pretty much Valve saying, "If only we could count to three. Mm-hmm. If only." And me, I just keep thinking about. Uh, it's kind of like, how do you not have the funds when you run Steam? Well, it's not so much get the it funds done by now. You know? Well, it's not so much the funds as much as it is just. They're, uh, it, okay, it's the people willing to work on projects. You see, Valve used to be pretty much, you can go to any project you want to. It's a very free-range place you can go. Like, say you're working on one project, and you're di- you get disenfranchised with it. Say, oh, you're working on this uh, new uh, first-person shooter or this new uh, or this new uh, fantasy game and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden development goes a direction you're not happy with. You don't have to sign anything. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is literally pick up your stuff and be like, "I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to be on the project anymore. I'll see you later." And then you go to them and find another project. Or if you want to start up your own project, then you just go to Gabe and you say, "Hey, Gabe, this is my idea. Can I receive capital for this?" And Gabe's just like, "Sure," and. Honestly, it's not like that anymore. And what it is now is it's pretty much um, optimization of the Steam platform and updating uh, and uh, pretty much updating the uh, the Source engine. That's really it. And honestly, man, I I know that there's people out there who are who hate the Epic Game Store. Trust me, I'm one of them. But I just hate Epic Games in general. Well, I know, but there's people out there who despise the Epic Games Store because they're because they're you know a lot of people are disenfranchised with it, and it also 
lacks a lot of the basic stuff that the Steam platform has. Here's what I will say. If via the Epic Game Store becoming successful, we get more Valve games, Valve eventually realizes, oh shit, we can't just do Steam. We actually have to take risks. We actually have to do this other stuff too. We have to rebuild people's confidence in our company. How do we do that? Oh, gee, I don't know. How about we make Left 4 Dead or Left uh, Left 4 Dead 3, Half Life 3, Portal 3? How about we actually give the people what they want, what they've been clamoring for for the past decade? Hell, not just for the past decade, for the past 15 years, man. 15 years since half since Half Life 2 dropped, and then uh, Half Life 2. Episodes 1 and 2, when they drop, you know, I guess that's been, what, 12 years since then? Uh, I can't remember. Give us what we want, guys. This is all we've ever wanted. This is all we have ever cherished in our lives. We have so many precious memories with these games. We have so many things that we want to play, but yet you all have become complacent. You become complacent as a platform instead of a developer. That's what pisses me off the most. You have some of the most talented people working for you. You have some of the most talented writers working for you. You have all of these things at your disposal. But instead, you're just a platform to just release video games on, and you're fine with printing money that way. Look, I'm not against making money. Make your fucking money. But... For God's sakes, if you're going to try and pass yourselves off as a developer still, you have to at least do something that merits being called a developer. Damn. I'm sorry. It's just it pisses me off that this is what we have to deal with nowadays. I love you, Gabe. I do. You're one of the most visionary, forward-thinking individuals in terms of PC platform. In terms of the PC platform. You are what a lot of people consider one of the meccas of it. From your work at Microsoft to your work at uh, to your work at uh, Valve, you are considered a god in a lot of ways. But prioritize games, man, because that's how you keep people interested in your company. I don't even think they have to prioritize games. It's just they have to like put some resources towards games. Well, that, that's I'm not saying so like do make anything, that, I'm not saying you know, make like, games your main priority. I know literally say games. that you have a team of like 20 dedicated people that you trust working <laughs> on Half-Life 3 and it'll be out in like 10 to 15 years is better than like jack shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, better than the stop and start uh, you know, the start and stop uh booking that we've gotten with Half-Life 3. It's just like, and the, and the writer even released a lot of the script online. And now people are wanting to build Half-Life 3 in the Source engine. Hmm. They're actually getting uh, coders together to try and build Half-Life 3. I don't know how it's going to work, but hopefully something good comes of it. Yeah. That being said, guys, I mean, I want a prioritization. Uh, What I meant by prioritize games, I don't mean... I don't mean, like, make it your main thing. I know maintaining Steam takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work and a lot of updating and all that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying completely put that by the wayside. I'm, a, I'm saying at least give us something. Give us some uh, acknowledgement that you are, that you are uh, developing this. I know... Uh, okay, for instance, here's a good example. Kingdom Hearts 3... Back in 2012, 2013, we didn't have anything. We had no notification of when or how or or where it was coming out. And then E3 arrived. And we got that trailer that showed off a little bit of gameplay. And it said, currently in development. And right then and there, I don't think the fandom cared how long it took. As long as it came out. And it came out this year, and I gotta say, I wasn't disappointed. I'm disappointed that there aren't any Final Fantasy characters or Square Enix characters in it, outside of, uh, you know, outside of a few, but still though, man, just letting people know that you're dedicating time and effort to this is sometimes all you need. 
Anyway. Anyway, um, I guess, I guess, yeah, that's going to do it for this. This, this is a blast from the past, and I'm glad we were able to watch this. So, uh, if you want to watch the original videos, links are in the description down below. This was Freeman's Mind, Episodes 1 and 2. And, uh, yeah, if you want to see more, feel free to, uh, click the link, uh, click our, uh, subscribe button down there. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay informed and stay uh, up to date. Uh, don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to leave a comment. And uh, until next time. Come hang out with us on our Discord. Too. Oh, yeah. And also hang out with us on our Discord. And also uh, check out our Patreon. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And we'll see you then. Peace out.